In this video, we will go through the process of creating a flex design and expedition layout. We will define the master stack up, draw our multiple board outlines, and then draw our bend areas. We will also show our grouting in the curved board outline as well as show the 3D export and manufacturing output in Valor. In this example, we will have a structure that consists of three rigid and two flex boards. The stack up of the rigid board already exists in the template, which is a four layer design. However, in this example, we will need to add the stack up for the flex layer scheme. This can be automatically created in the template when you start the design, but we will do this manually in this example. In the master stack up, we'll add the top and bottom cover layers between layer one and two. We will also change the substrate to a flex substrate instead of rigid, as we want to use polyimid for the flex core. This will be the flex connector stack up. We'll repeat this process to create the other flex stack up where the cover layer is between layer three and four for another two layer design. In the master stack up, we can also add adhesives and stiffeners. However, for this example, it is not needed and we will not add any. Now that the stack up is created, we must first create the individual board outlines for the three rigid boards and the two flex boards. Typically, this can be brought in by the mechanical domain through MCAD collaboration, but in this case, we will manually sketch these outlines. We will first start off with the rigid outline. We will create a 25 by 50 millimeter outline and open the properties section to ensure that the type is set to rigid and we can provide it a name for the design, which is required for the stack up schemes and the bend areas. We will then create a second rigid outline that's 25 by 22 millimeter. We will connect these two boards with a flex outline. Again, it will be an 11 by 7 millimeter outline. We will need to change the outline type to flex and we'll name it flex connector 2. We will create our last rigid board outline below the two rigid outlines. We will need to connect the top left rigid with the bottom rigid outline with another flex connector. Notice that since the flex outlines are overlapping, we will manage this with a unique stack up that we've defined. Additionally, the board outlines may be coincident to properly convey the stack up geometry. In Expedition, there is a trim board outlines command that allows you to assist the user in modifying slightly overlapping board outlines. The route borders can be individual per board outline or one route border for the entire design. However, since we are dealing with overlapping board outlines, this design requires individual route borders. Now that we have our geometry handled, we need to assign the stack up per board outline. You can manually do this in the properties dialog, which has to be done per board outline. But in this example, we will use the stack up scheme. This allows us to assign multiple outlines sharing the same stack up very quickly. In the stack up scheme, we will start by creating a rigid scheme. This stack up is simple, it's just a four layer design. We don't need the cover lay information so we can disable it as it does not exist in the rigid stack up. Next, we will create the top flex stack up. This will be between layer one and two. And again, it won't need the solder mask information as the co uh, cover lay is used for the flex design. We also only enable layers one to two as this is only a two layer stack up. Finally, we will create the bottom flex stack up. We'll go through the same process, but only enable layers three and four and disable the solder mask and keep the cover lay. 
once the stack up is completed, we can go to each scheme and assign our board outlines, which we've defined a name prior in the properties dialog. Here you can create and assign many board outlines with the same stack up very quickly. Now that we have the geometry defined and the stack up assigned to each outline, we need to define how the flex structures will bend and rotate. In Expedition, we do this by defining a draw object called bend area. We can define the bend radius, angle, origin, and additional properties to define the location and rotation where the region will bend. This can only be done in the flex regions of the board. In this example, we will create three bend areas. The first one will be on the bottom flex outline. The next two are in an overlapping region. In this case, we need to associate the bend area to the board outline that we've associated in the design. Once we have the bend areas defined, our angle and radius, we can validate the bend areas by opening the 3D view. We can review and see the stack up of the individual regions as well as the bend in real time to check for interferences. Once we are further into the development of the project, in this example, we will need to route the bottom flex connector. This is easy to do with the multiple hug route command in layout. This command allows you to select any draw object, whether it be the board outline or user draft layer, to follow and create a route that follows that outline. In this example, we will simply select the nets that we wish to include in our route. We will choose the width and the separation. We then need to choose a start location of the route and end location where the traces should be created. Multiple hug traces will follow the outline with your defined separation and create these traces. This allows us to create dozens of connections following a complex outline shape in mere seconds. As well as viewing the flex structure in 3D, we can also import mechanical elements directly into the 3D view and layout. This allows us to run online and batch 3D design rule checks to check for interferences and identify our placement strategies. Once we are satisfied with the design, we can send the 3D view with the enclosure to the mechanical domain via the step command informally. We have the option to configure copper, solder mask, and even the bent state if we want to send it over to the mechanical designer. Once it's in the mechanical domain, he can visually validate the geometry, mechanical elements, cover lay, and run a final sign off on interference checks with the design. Finally, when the design is in a state to send to the manufacturer, we can generate the ODB++ dataset. In the past, when we sent information over to the manufacturer on flex designs, it was predominantly notes. With ODB++, we provide intelligence in order to get rid of those notes and be directly in the dataset itself. If you open the ODB++ data in the viewer, you'll be able to see that the flex stack up, as well as the regions, like the flex and rigid and bend areas, are automatically defined for the manufacturer to see. So you can see this directly in the tool. With this brief introduction, you should be able to create your own flex designs.